Well, they say it was a large rock from outer space that wiped out the dinosaurs, and the fear is that a similar event may one day bring humankind to a fiery end. But how much do we actually know about meteors, meteoroids, and meteorites? Personally, I don't know very much at all, which is why I'm thankfully joined by three gurus from the Port Macquarie Astronomical Society, Rodney, Alan and Kevin. Welcome to the program tonight. Good evening, Tim. Hi, Tim. Welcome to your listeners. So tell me, Rodney, I was, I was reading today that rocks from outer space are a lot more common than we realise in terms of them falling to Earth. Just how common are they? Oh, it's true. Uh, we, we, we get hit all the time, all day, every day, but it's usually objects the size of a grain of sand up to about the size of a pea. Uh, most of them we don't see at all because they enter the atmosphere way too high um, and a lot of it enters in the daytime. But they okay, are solid? Okay, yeah, yeah, they are solid. It, it's, um, it's dust, rock, okay. uh, anything from the size of a grain of sand up to the size of a pea. Do you think it's um, possible, Rodney, that one time when I've been walking down the street and you get something in your eye, it could be a meteorite? It could be something from outer space that's entered our atmosphere <laughs> I like to think and that floated way. all the way down gently to the to the surface of the earth. Very and good. when yeah. when when you're cleaning your house, um, some of the some of that dust you're sweeping up is probably from, from outer space. If you're really interested, run a magnet over the roof of your house and you'll pick up little metallic grains with a magnet. Wow. They're little tiny pieces of iron type meteorites which have entered our atmosphere, burned up and then floated down gently onto the under the roof of your house. Jump in, gentlemen, because my microphone's not working. Right. Um, Tim, well, a few years back, one was big enough to go through the roof of a house at Loriton here on the mid-north coast, I, I heard on the news. If you, you look back in history, uh, you, you would have to be very unlucky to be hit by anything bigger than a, than a, than a grain of sand. But uh, apparently uh, 1911 in uh, Egypt, um, a, a dog got uh, clobbered by a meteorite and uh, unfortunately it died. But a dog got cl- yeah. clobbered by a meteorite? Yes. Is that right? Where in Loriton did you no, say? No, no, this was, this was in Egypt. I apologise. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm back in your Loriton. I've fixed my microphone now. I'm concentrating, I promise. Yeah. I so went that's through the right. roof of the ceiling. Wow. Yeah, and also a meteorite was uh, hit a, a, a car in the States, went through the boot of a car in the States. So, uh, wow. Yeah, they do. So they it does do. happen. Yeah, and not long ago, one ploughed into the bank uh, of a river somewhere in uh, South America, I think, and caused quite a large, large crater for a little while and then uh, filled up with water, ground water came up and filtered through. Uh, but of course, the weather, the weather, uh, the rain and the wind and uh, that sort of thing erodes them away over a period of time. So we've got no record of uh, you know where they have actually hit the Earth. But if you look at the Moon, you can see literally thousands mm. of them on the Moon because it has no atmosphere to protect it. It's like not protected. Does, yes. Yeah, mm. yeah. And, and the Moon has no weather to erode them away, other than being repeatedly hit by more meteorites. Yeah. There are some people who actually fear Earth colliding with one of these big meteors because we've historically we've seen what it did to the dinosaurs. We hear about that. We've got the evidence of craters, humongous craters around the world, so we know it happens scientifically that the data's all there. What are the odds, do you think? Do you, as amateur astronomers, worry about this sort of thing? No, I, I don't worry. I've read, 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 just reading recently, they... Uh, there's a number of telescopes that actually photograph the skies and are, 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 are photographing the ecliptic part of the, the solar system, looking for objects that are moving and, uh, and looking for what's called NEOs, near-Earth objects. Um, and we know roughly where they are, the, those orbits are. And uh, so there's nothing going to clobber us any time soon, that's for sure. But, Alan, do you think that all of them are detected? Because that's the uh, argument. We know where some of them are, but what about the mystery one that will come out of the blue? Yeah, um I know there's over a thousand that have been uh, catalogued, um, and these these near Earth ones are. If if, if you look at a, a diagram of their orbits in Earth, you'd, you'd say why why aren't we getting hit? But you know, space is a big a big area, and uh, um, there, there, there's one that came through in 2004 called Tutalis, and that mm. was about six kilometres long, but that was about four million k away. So that's you know the the the, the moon's only 400,000. K, so that was quite a you know close but in, in astronomical close terms, in astronomical terms close and yeah. uh, one that they were a little bit worried about uh, recently is they've given it a name Apophis um, 2029 it's going to come closer than the moon uh, and wow that'll 
affect its orbit a little bit from Earth's gravity. So 2036, it'll be back again, and they're not quite sure yet whether it'll be closer or so what's, what's it called? Um, it is called Apophis, Apophis, and it's 320 metres. Even the in, name sounds yeah, ominous. 320 metres in length, so it it wipe out a city. But I'm, I'm not saying this to scare anyone. No, but no. The chances are, you know, something like 20,000 to one, or something like that, that it's going to uh, get us. But but it's something they've got their eye on, and. Uh, They'll wow. track it a bit closer in the meantime and have a better idea. The ones that are really difficult to spot are the ones coming at us from the sun because most, we can't really observe the sun um, because it's too bright. So any objects that are coming towards us from the oh. sun, they're the ones that are, are the dangerous ones that, that we really don't know until they actually clobber us. So, Rodney, are there people doing research on this in terms of not just detecting them but working out what to do when we finally do? And it's inevitable one day we'll find one that is on a collision course. In, in the movies they are. <laughs> I, I, I've watched all the What's movies. What's it called? So. The Bruce Willis one, Armageddon. Ar- Armageddon isn't it? And, and, it. and Deep Impact and mm-hmm. and Meat Media and all mm-hmm. those other sort of they're, movies. They're you've, you've got engineers and scientists that do great and wonderful things in the movies. Not only they're, did they're Bruce Willis get rid of it, he he managed to return to Earth after he finished the rock off, didn't he? It's quite amazing. Or did he die? No, no, he, he died. Oh, did he? Yeah, he Sorry to spoil the ending himself. for all those, but he sacrificed yeah, himself. Yeah, that, that, um, <laughs> what do you call it? Um, die hard in space. I might have seen the director's <laughs> cut where he returned. So yeah. there are people doing research on this, though. Um, uh, uh, seriously. Serious yeah, research yeah. in yeah. terms of using nuclear weapons? Um, no. No? No, 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 that's, no. A, that's <laughs> the very last thing you would do. You'd want to keep them intact. <laughs> yeah, you really you know, have a meteor do, shower there. Yeah, you do not want to try to break them up or do anything else with them. We want to keep nudge right. them off course, and there, there have yeah. there have been That's some exactly right. nudge them off course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there have yeah. been some mission, some missions to to near Earth objects, to um and and they've landed craft on on them. Okay, and what have they found? What are they made of? What are, what are meteors exactly? Oh uh, well, they they you've got several classes. The, the main the main varieties are metallic and stony. And we've brought you a sample oh, of a, a sample metallic here. meteorite. You have brought a box in uh, for for the people listening. I've got this very heavy box here, weighs more than my son, and uh, this is an example of a metallic yes. meteorite. That's I a, can see that instantly. Yep. yep, and people can see this if they come down to the observatory yes. down there in Port Macquarie. Yes, yes. A, sort a, of a, describe it. Can have a look. Can I pick it up? Like, and yeah, drop yeah, it sure. on your foot. No, <laughs> it's a good paperweight, isn't it? Wow. It's and an it's, expensive paperweight. So it's, it's obviously been cut, though. Yeah, yeah it's stage, been neat, it? neatly sliced and polished it, it, on down one, one side. surface yeah. so that you can see the internal structure. I know I've said this before, but I hope I don't grow warts or anything strange happen to me after touching this. Uh, I've got conspiracy no, theoriitis, so <laughs> all of you seem okay, it's got, I it's got what looks looks like a lot of thumbprints on the outside of it. It, does, it looks like the moon. Uh, yeah, um, that's that's the effect as that object passed through our atmosphere and, and started melting and ablating, mm. and that's how you get those, those dimple effects on the a outside of it. technical term called a fusion crust, and it's actually... From what I've heard, when they come to the ground, you can actually touch them straight away. You think they'd be red hot, but they're not. they've cooled in the last bit of their descent because wow. the, the interior is still freezing cold from outer space. Uh, well, well, that particular one you're holding in your hand is, yep. is metallic. Right. It's it's um, mostly iron and nickel. It's got other other heavy elements in it too. Germanium, so it's made of all iridium, stuff that we know cadmium. about here on Earth. Though. Yeah. Yeah, There's uh, nothing mysterious in there that we don't can't analyse uh, or understand. No, no, uh, uh, it's... Whatever you find in meteorites, you can find here on the Earth. Uh, and um, with that particular sample of meteorite you've got there, um, that's, one, that's one sample of the fall in mm. South America. Give us some, um, some definitions here. Asteroid, meteor, meteorite. What's the difference between all these okay, terms? Well, basically, they're much all the same. They're all basically rocks, but they're just of various sizes. Um, so a meteoroid, uh, and that's a problem we have also, is pronouncing some of these awkward names yeah. in astronomy. Uh, a, a meteoroid is, is, is a rocky object, um, either from the Kuiper belt or a near-Earth object, something like that. An asteroid would be uh, a bit of a debate about that, whether dif- whether demarcation line is on size. Um, it's, it's considerably larger an asteroid. I, I think we said over 
10 kilometres or something like that. Yeah. Uh, the meteorites are, are, are uh, meteoroids that come through the atmosphere and actually land on the ground. So they become, they become uh, right has something to do with the ground. I don't, I'm not quite sure there, but meteorites. Yeah. And meteors burn up in the atmosphere. Uh, and they're that dust that uh, Rodney was talking about a little bit. They're the ones that a lot of people think are a shooting star. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Uh, a lot of Australians don't realise that we've got great examples of, of impacts uh, zones in our own country, don't we? It's true. Where are they? Wolf, yeah, Wolf Creek. Uh, like, <laughs> oh, well, yeah, after the movie, yeah. a lot of people That's, knew uh, about that. 880 metres across the Wolf Creek. Northern one, Territory. Northern Territory. And that's uh, 300,000 years ago the, the impact was dated as being at Wolf, Wolf Creek. Um, the, the Henbury ones, which are on the road from um, Uluru towards the towards uh, Alice Springs. It's only about 5k off the road there. The, there's a group of craters there, but the largest crater there is about a... Uh, it's smaller than the, the other ones, about 180 metres, and that's dated at 5,000 years, so maybe our Indigenous uh, folk were, might have witnessed uh, something, something happening amazing? there. Do yeah. we have any idea what sort of damage uh, uh, an asteroid of that size would cause? Well... Yeah, well, to make a crater 180 metres in diameter, I suppose it's like a, a mini mini nuclear bomb. At any rate, you wouldn't want yeah. it to be too too close. Yeah, as, as a as a rule of thumb, um, an object when it strikes the ground makes a crater about 20 times its own size. Oh, okay. So if 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 an object is say 50 metres across, yep. And hits the ground, it will make a crater about a kilometre across. So when we're looking at these craters, that's not the size. It's not a good representation of the size of the rock. Mm. It can also flip the soil completely over too. So oh, you yeah. have the, the you know many metres yeah, yeah. down can become on the top, and yeah. the top goes down to the bottom. Wow, yeah. is that yeah. right? Yep. So it it, it upturns. What what it doesn't vaporise, it, it turns over backwards onto itself. Could be a good place and to start planting a crop, and that's what that's what makes the Rich soil. That, that, that's what makes the crater, <laughs> uh, the, the rim of the crater around there. Mm. But, okay, one, but one one thing pe- one one thing a lot of people don't understand and probably don't appreciate when the, when the object does strike the Earth and vaporizes, particles are accelerated out beyond the acceleration required to escape Earth's gravity. So you you get a, a shower of Gl- molten, glowing hot stuff being fl- flung out into space, yep. and it can these particles then envelop the Earth and then fall back through the atmosphere. And when they do that, they're called tectites. Okay. Getting back to the craters, probably the most famous example of one in in the world is, is in, Arizo- in, in Arizona, oh, no. uh, which is called Meteor or Meteor Crater. It's about one point two k across, but it's the typical shape it looks about like one of the craters on the moon because yeah. it, it's reasonably recent it's uh well, 49,000 years old so oh. it, it hasn't been eroded away as much as some of these you know million year old ones that have been covered with do they it, know it, where that the, the rock that um um eliminated or uh, caused the demise of uh, the dinosaurs yeah, that, that's it, on the yucatan peninsula yeah. in, in, in in that in isthmus Mexico. between north and south america yeah Okay. In the uh, Car- Carib- Caribbean, that, um, is that the, the Gulf biggest of one? Is no, that that's the biggest about the third biggest. So the biggest ones actually in South Africa that we know of. But mm-hmm. because Earth is a uh, not not like the Moon, we've got uh, you know uh, tectonics. tectonics, plates, and all that Shifting. sort of thing. There, there could be ones much bigger that have been wiped. The evidence has been wiped out by now, and we're two thirds water. So there's probably a lot under the ocean. Are there, there. craters under the ocean? So, some have been some discovered have been. under the ocean, um, one between the Falkland Islands and, and the mainland of South America. Wow. So wh- if people want to come and see the rock, tell us a little bit about the observatory down there opposite Town Beach. Um, when, when are you open and what can people learn if they come down? Uh, we, we're open every Sunday and every Wednesday evening without fail. If it's yeah. a clear night, Tim, of course, we'll have the telescope pointed at something of interest. Yep. Um, so as the people come in, they can have a look through the the telescope, mm-hmm. and then there's the presentation, and if the clouds have stayed away, perhaps on the way out, 
uh, we might have the telescope on another object because it's an hour oh, or so good. later. Yeah. So they, they get a chance to have a, have a look. You know. and, and once a month, every, every Tuesday from 7.30, we have members' evening. Um, so any, any guests are quite welcome to come along and say good day. If anybody wants to give us a call um, about anything tonight or ask a question, give us a call on 65852233. And I also have a card here with all your details um, about the observatory so people can call us about that if they need to. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity, Tim. Tim. Thank you very much.